Hello, my name is Mike Gennetti from Spot Track, breaking down Aaron Rodgers' recent three-year contract with the Green Bay Packers. Let's start there. This is generally not how we do business here. The NFL, the NFLPA, and our Spot Track site deals with New Year's new money in terms of contract terms. So 99 times out of 100, this is a two-year contract extension, two new years, and plenty of new money. So if you're seeing things like two years, $120 million out there, $60 million plus per year, it's correct. But after speaking to a few sources, uh, notably Joel Corey, former GM, former agent for NFL players, uh, we both came to an agreement kind of internally here that because of the way that the old contract was simply ripped up, the, seven, the 17th game bonus, the salary, the incentives, the workout was thrown out and everything was started over from scratch, we're going to treat this as a three-year contract. So if you look at Spot Track and you're looking here at the page, we're treating this as a three-year, $150.8 million contract, a brand new deal starting from scratch. None, none of the previous things outside of the prorated signing bonuses have come over to this new contract. So for our purposes, Aaron Rodgers is now a $50.2 million per year player. So that was correct, the $50 million per year. The $200 million, not so much, Okay. If you hear that Aaron Rodgers has a five-year, $186 million contract, that is correct. If you hear that this is three for 150, that is correct. If you hear it's two new years with 120 million, that is correct. I'm just telling you right now, for accounting purposes, for our database, this is going to be three for 150 and change, a little bit over 50 million a year. All right, let's get into the numbers. 2022, he gets 42 million. It's all locked in. It's a almost minimum salary, 115. The 112 would have been the minimum salary for his uh, 10, year, 10 plus years experience. So that drops all the way down. And the most important part here, of course, is the cap hit, which was 46.6 million, is now 28.5 million. That's the big one. That's obviously why we were here in the first place. They wanted to keep Aaron Rodgers. They needed to lower the cap hit. They still have some work to do at the time of this video, by the way, about six, seven million to clear before they get cap neutral for 2022. So how did we get to 42 million cash then with just the 1.1 salary? Well, there's a $40.8 million roster bonus that because it's fully guaranteed at the time of signing can get treated like a signing bonus. So that 40.8 can divide by five years and it's 8.16 million of cap in each of the five seasons. Why is this 24.4? Because 16.32 has to transfer over from the previous contract contract as does the restructure bonuses from the last contract. So that's why you're seeing some inflated signing bonus prorations here in the first two years. That's new, new signing bonus plus old signing bonus coming together for uh, you know an inflated cap hit. So that's 2022, 42 million cash, 28.5 on the cap. 2023 is when the fun starts here, all right? Still a, basically a minimum salary, close to it, a couple, you know, basically 10 grand off. 59.5 million cash in 2023, thanks to a 58.3 option bonus. So there's two ways to look at this, and you're going to see reports that have each way. This can be a big base salary that they decide to convert to an option bonus, or we can start it as an option bonus, and if they decline the option, it would revert back to a massive guaranteed big salary. For contract purposes, we always assume the options are exercised. You'll see the proration, and in this case, it's fully guaranteed through the first two years here. So this 101.5 million includes the 42, this option bonus, these two salaries, and it's fully guaranteed right now for skill and cap at the time of signing. So we've already prorated over four years that $58.3 million option bonus because it's not getting declined, <laughs> okay? So that represents the 31.6 million cap, pretty tenable for a salary cap that could be 230 million plus next year. So these two years look pretty good, but I'm gonna tell you why it's scary in a second. 2024, the last real year of this contract in my opinion. Again, a low minimum salary, but there's another option bonus to talk about here. It's 47 million this time. Again, we've assumed it's exercised, so that's why you see inflated proration numbers here. These are, this is the combination of two option bonuses over the past over the final three years of this deal. And now the cap hits start to get north of 40 million again. So 
we don't get back to 46.6 million until after 2024. So from a cap perspective, this contract has achieved its goal. It, it has given some cap flexibility to Green Bay over the course of this and maybe the next couple of seasons. From a cash perspective, it's 150 million point eight over three. And there's no way in my mind he's not getting that. The only way he doesn't get that is if he retires, is if he walks away from this contract, maybe after 2023, and the $47 million option bonus that is just goes away at that point. It is recouped. It's never paid out, and it comes off the books. You know That might be best-case scenario for Green Bay as we started to talk about the structure and the guarantees and the dead cap because any of you who have looked at this column so far are noticing some jarring numbers. Certainly doesn't matter so much here, but going down, if I'm if I'm drawing the line in sand after 2024, which is where this contract obviously does it, when when the cash drops to 20 and 15 million after that, we're seeing 76.8 million of dead cap sitting in 2025, which is absurd. And I realize the cap might be 270 at that point, and some teams may be okay taking on 76 million. And if you split that out, right, 38 million and 38 million, that's doable. Not like, you know, that's not great for a team that would have to be rebuilding from the quarterback position, but it's certainly doable. We've seen teams take on $34 million dead cap charges just last year with Carson Wentz, and we're going to see more of that, I think, soon with Matt Ryan. So it's doable, but how do we avoid that if we're Green Bay? Well, here's the problem. Because of the vesting, because these first two years are basically just locked in, you know, there's no getting out of that 59 and change with this option bonus. So you'd think, all right, well, they trade him before the $47 million option bonus kicks in. That was my first thought. They keep him for two years. The caps are super friendly. They can work with that. And then before the 2024, you know, essentially at the time of the 2024 league year, they can flip him out of here. This salary and that $47 million option bonus would transfer to the new team it would become somebody else's problem, which would alleviate a heck of a lot of dead cap here and make it a very tenable situation for Green Bay to move on. Except the language in this contract says that that $47 million option bonus has to be exercised by the fifth, league, by the fifth waiver day of 2025. 2024, excuse me. Let me start over. It must be exercised five days after the 2023 Super Bowl. So the fifth waiver day of 2024, which is basically February 10th, February 15th, around there. Um, and if you noticed, trades aren't allowed to process before the league year. So if we're in the waiver period and an option is exercised, that option now lives with that team. So Aaron Rodgers and his $47 million option bonus in 2024 are going to be impacting Green Bay salary cap, which means... In my opinion, there's only one way out of this contract, and there's only one way around going through the motions here of this contract and then avoiding $76 million of dead cap in 2025 if he retires, if he wants to be traded, if he wants out. That's theirs. This is bonus that has been paid that they'd have to take on. And it's not signing bonus. It's option bonus. None of this is signing bonus, in fact. It's roster bonus and option bonus, which is protective from retirement recoupment. So while Tom Brady may have to give back some signing bonus, but probably not now, right? That won't be the case with Aaron Rodgers. The $40.8 million here that's a signing bonus was a roster bonus that is being treated as a signing bonus because of the full guarantee on it. You can't recoup the roster bonus. It vests from an accounting standpoint in the year that it's given, 2022. So it's his. Smart business from David Dunn and Aaron Rodgers there. Smart business using the double option bonus because it really puts the onus on the player here. Aaron Rodgers has a lot of decisions with his career, but Green Bay really doesn't have many. To me, the only one they have, and it's crazy, but maybe it's not crazy, is to go one and done on this contract. If the Green Bay Packers simply say, we have, we've been afforded $13 million of cap space, or excuse me, $18 million of cap space here, we're going to be able to get neutral. We're going to keep Devontae on the franchise tag. Okay. 
We're going to bring back Alan Lazard. We're going to do what we can defensively. We'll extend some of our defensive players because they're long-term guys anyway. Rashawn Gary, Jair Alexander. We've extended Preston Smith for cap and, and football purposes. But this is going to be a one-and-done situation with our quarterback and maybe our wide receiver too on, on the one-year tag. If they go one year, $42 million, and then trade him next year, now we're talking. Now somebody else takes on the $102 million of options here and salaries that live in 2023 and 2024. It's still $50 million a year, so he wouldn't want a new contract at that point most likely. It could be restructured as necessary. But let's say the 49ers are, have swung and missed with Trey Lance. Let's say Indianapolis walks through a one-year situation again with a quarterback and they have not figured it out. Well, this kind of contract is exactly what they'd be looking for. A proven veteran in Aaron Rodgers, under term. Yeah, the, the money's ridiculous, but you're going to have teams take this on. There's going to be the opportunity to move two for 100 for Aaron Rodgers, regardless of the structure. And in that case, if they're preceding the options... They would move on from all of this. One, two, three, four, gone. New team. This stays, right? These four stay here. But all the option structure will go if they go one and done on this contract. I don't think it's likely. I'm just telling you how I'm reading this contract and, and the conversations I've had with a couple of people about it. It's possible that they can move on in 2023 before it really gets going. Take one year, one more year with Aaron Rodgers, which is really all we've said along along the way, right? And guys like Andrew Brandt have been saying all along, let's just get through one more year, the official last dance of Aaron Rodgers, and then let somebody else deal with it. Well, basically what we have here is that one year with Green Bay and then a contract that's already in place for the next team to take on and move forward with. So it's kind of like doing, you know, doing the test before the homework, right? It's possible that's where we are. I'm not going to say it's likely. I'm not going to say that's where we're headed here. But the structure of this contract does not offer an out after 2023. Does not offer an out before 2024. Does not offer a great out after 2024, even though that's what this thing is. It's three years. But if this is just Ryder and Rogers three more years and hope you can extend him to keep that dead cap spread, spread out a little bit, and he continues to play at age 42 for Green Bay, then I guess that's best case scenario for Green Bay. But that just doesn't seem likely. This seems to be a year-to-year -year situation. So the two best financial options, in my opinion, are one and done or three years and then an extension to keep him in Green Bay and fix this mess at the, at the back end of the contract, which are real years. I mean, there's a real roster bonus here in April of 2025. These are real salaries. This, these are not void years. We call them kind of dummy years. They're silly, silly money that Aaron Rodgers would probably never accept, but they help the cap. They help the prorations of the option bonuses and things like that. So there's not much wiggle room here. This is a powerful player contract, as you might expect from Aaron Rodgers. This is all he's ever done. Top of the market stuff. You can call it 60 a year. You can call it 50 a year. Um, you can call it a three-year contract or a two-year extension, but it's bulletproof in a lot of ways. And the only real out, the real kind of not so safe, but decent out is a one and done. So that's how I'm going to treat this right now, that there's a, there's a potential at least that Aaron Rodgers still moves on from Green Bay after 2022, after what could be considered pretty good value, $42 million for one year for Aaron Rodgers. You know, if he's a $50 million player, and he is, and pretty much everywhere you look here, he's a $50 million player. It's not a bad parting shot, one for 42 and a, and a chance at another Super Bowl in the NFC. So that's my breakdown of this contract. Any questions, of course, at Spotrek on Twitter. And we'll be back with more of these contract breakdowns as they become available.